Hi there, I'm Laura Mize, pediatric speech language pathologist, and welcome to TeachMeToTalk.com's Therapy Tip of the Week. I love Christmas, don't you? Today we're talking about a classic Christmas tradition, Advent calendars, and we're talking about how we can modify this activity for toddlers and preschoolers. Now, traditionally, an Advent calendar is a tool to help you count down to Christmas. Of course, toddlers are not yet developmentally ready to understand concepts like like time, especially really abstract and difficult concepts like days or weeks. Kids won't understand those kinds of time concepts until they are kindergarten age. So we do not want to worry about using an advent calendar for that purpose. Now many one, two, and three-year-olds aren't yet ready for any kind of mathematical concept beyond learning to understand you know, one item versus two items and other quantity words like more, all, and some. But here's the truth. <laughs> Some of our little friends get really obsessed with numbers, and that's what they absolutely love. And so we have to meet them where they are with that. Now, sometimes they like numbers because they've shown a little interest in it, and their parents have forged ahead and said, oh, they like it. Let me go ahead and teach them. But sometimes I've worked with toddlers who are late talkers who pretty much have just caught on to numbers very quickly, almost on their own. So again, if you're working with a child like that, be sure that you are using that interest. We have to take things that they like as a hook and a way to bring them uh, into learning things that aren't coming as easily for them. So this is where our advent calendars come in for those kinds of kids. We can take an activity that's really meant for older kids and then adapt it to, so that it is developmentally appropriate for our little friends with language delay. So even kids who aren't fascinated with numbers are going to like the toys that I'm showing you here today. Now there's so many different options for advent calendars out there. I've picked three and I'm going to show you you all three of these because they're just perfect for children with a wide variety of developmental levels. Now this first one is from Fisher Price. I picked it up last year and I really, really like it. It's musical and it plays We Wish You a Merry Christmas When You Push the Star. I am not going to make you listen to that. <laughs> you can thank me for that. But the numbers are printed right here on the tree. So if you have children who like counting by rope, they really like for you to count, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and they kind of get into that. Or if they are into visually identifying numbers, meaning they see the number and like to point it out to you, or they point to it and look at you because they want you to say the number. This is a super, super way to uh, use that child's interest. And let me just say, I would never focus on teaching a nonverbal child numbers. That's not appropriate. That's not functional. These are, counting is not something that he or she should be able to do or we, sh we shouldn't expect them to do that yet in their everyday lives. But again, remember, we're using this when a child has already displayed that initial interest. But this is where this toy is still pretty usable because it comes with Velcro pieces that actually include pictures of lots and lots of familiar vocabulary. Now, the ornaments have Velcro on the back, like I mentioned, so they are going to stick right on the tree, which is pretty fun for kids. And I also I like them because a lot of them, can you hear that, are crinkly. And so they have that little uh, something, that little noise for kids to hear. You know, a, a therapist would think about that as auditory stimulation. But as a parent, you may think, that's kind of cool. He'll like this. He'll, he'll stay with this. He'll want to do this with me. Now, like I mentioned before, about half the words are familiar. Words that kids hear every day, like dog or house or choo-choo. Now, lots of the uh, words that are used here, pictures with this toy, are also holiday themed, but they're important this time of year, a gift or a present, and certainly Santa if you celebrate Christmas. So again, you can use this toy for teaching new vocabulary. Now remember, with a lot of kids who are like talkers, they not only have problems 
saying the words, but understanding the words. So we want to be sure that we are saying the word that we are trying to get the kid to say or understand over and over and over so that they have enough exposure and enough opportunities to learn that new word. So for many kids with this kind of toy, you would really just focus on modeling or saying the word. You might just let a kid pick one of the ornaments from here, um, the little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a train on the bottom with little pouches. So you may just let them pick one and then you would just say the word and you would say something like, and again, I'm going to model it for you, just like I would say it if a child were here, so that you understand how to keep it really, really simple and not over talk. So you would say, you know, bear, look, bear, see that bear, and then do something funny and unexpected. So you may growl, you know, something like, or, or say, oh, he's going to get you, Arr. something to keep that child's attention and keep him wanting to play with you and stay with you. So even when you're teaching language, even when your purpose is let him learn to understand the word and say the word. You still want to think about that play piece to keep him right there with you. Now, if you're helping a child learn how to understand words in addition to say words, let me give you a couple of examples of activities that I would use. First of all, just do some simple commands. Uh, you might say, uh, you know, tickle that bear or pat that bear or kiss that bear or hug that bear or put that bear on your head. Anything where he has to follow something that you've said, a direction that you've given. And then you might, uh, for a kid who likes numbers, before you lose his attention, you would say, why don't we put it on number 10? Where's 10? And again, that's if he can already identify numbers and if he already likes it. Um, and, and it's already doing that on his own. Now, one other thing that I do here for receptive language is put out a set of two or three ornaments here, and you'll just ask the child to get the correct one. And so you may say, you know, where's house? And you want him to reach down and get it. Now, if he messes up and gets an incorrect choice, don't make a big deal about it. Don't try to overcorrect him and say, no, that's not it, or you're wrong. Just label it. Just say, you know, that's bear. Put the bear on the tree and then go right back to, where's house? Show me house. Let's find house. And you may do some pointing and things too. Let me mention one other word about vocabulary choice. Lots of these pictures, again, will be Christmas related or holiday related. And you may have to use words that are more familiar and words that they would hear in everyday language. So instead of saying hot chocolate or cocoa with this picture here, I would just say cup. Or instead of saying poinsettia or poinsettia, if you say it like that, if you live in the South, <laughs> you would say, where are the flowers? Find the flowers. So you can really adapt this activity for whatever language level uh, you, you, the child is that you are working with. Now let's look at this next advent calendar that I just picked up and I haven't even used it yet, but it's really, really similar to a homemade version of this kind of calendar that it's worked beautifully for me in the past and kids have loved it. So I liked to find this one that's a little bit more durable. Now let me tell you how this calendar is arranged. As you can see, there are numbers, which again, this is what, what we're talking about today, what to do with kids who are obsessed with numbers, but there are pockets here on the calendar. So this is just perfect perfect for creating that anticipation, or as I like to say, you know, it makes a surprise, which lots of kids uh, find really, really exciting. So ahead of time, what you're going to do is fill the pockets with a variety of small toys. Now, some therapists may like to use flashcards here or picture cards, but I don't really like to do that. With toddlers and preschoolers, I like to keep it as real as I can, and so what we'll be doing or what I'm doing is finding objects that are small enough to fit inside these little pockets. So I rated my toy inventory. And as you can see, I have a big variety here. I have some animals like the horse, some common toys like a ball or a kid's favorite character like a little minion. Uh, and you may even... Uh, think about more functional kinds of words that children need for their everyday lives like brush and bowl. If you have some little... Uh, 
Barbie sets and some pretend food. You know, French fries are always a favorite. So do everything that you can to pick a big variety of vocabulary. Now remember for your kids who love numbers, you'll make a really big deal about saying something like, oh, you know, what's, what's in number 17? Where's 17? And again, I can hardly stop myself from using my pointer here for some visual cues. And be sure that you're doing this in a super, super fun way with your uh, voice and your facial expressions. Now, I've mentioned this in a lot of previous therapy tips of the week uh, videos, but I want to say it again. Some adults really balk at saying, or, or when I give the advice, you need to change how you sound and how you look to keep a kid's attention. Don't resist that change. Many, many times that one change alone can make a big, big difference for a late talker. So you may have something like, you know, instead of saying airplane, get airplane. Can you see how boring that is? You may do something like, you know, watch him fly. Oh, my plane, the plane. And again, that makes it super, super, super enticing for a child. And it makes it much more likely that he'll stay with you through the entire activity. Now, previously, I mentioned that I made a version of this calendar several years ago. So you could use some poster paper, cut out the shape of the Christmas tree, glue some extra pieces of poster paper here or some envelopes. And if you are that kind of crafty person, <laughs> you can then use this same uh, activity year after year after year. But if you'd rather just buy it, like I've done, I've included the links there at the bottom of your post. Now I want to show you this last version of an advent calendar, and it's really a book by Eric Carle, who's just one of my favorite children's authors. Now, uh, look at this. <laughs> it is beautiful, and I know that it is really, really, really going to uh, make a young child want to dive in here and do some things. So I would not use this unless the child is really gentle and unless they have lots and lots of self-control. So maybe even older preschoolers. Truth be told, I do not have one kid that I'm currently seeing <laughs> that I'm going to share this activity with this year. But I went ahead and bought it so that I can have it for years and years to come. Now you'll look here, there are lots of numbers. So again, for our kids who are obsessed with numbers, they will just be mesmerized by this and you can open the little flap here and there's a puzzle piece that you can pull off and again the vocabulary ranges from familiar everyday words to things that are more holiday related and then the goal here is to have a kid attach it to the tree and there's some ways that you can fold it over and again it'll be harder for our children who are younger and who don't have great fine motor control but this is just a beautiful toy and if you are really struggling to find things that your children with numbers really really like this would be a good one and I would certainly recommend it and again you can find the post at the or the link at the bottom of this post so if you like the tips and the toys that I've shared in today's video I'd also like for you to take a look at my website teachmetotalk.com I have so many resources there just waiting for you. If you're the parent of a late talker or if you're a professional, a speech language pathologist, an OT, an early intervention specialist, I have all kinds of great ideas there for you, not only for Christmas, but for uh, the whole year. So take a minute to check that out. That's all for today. I'm Laura Mize, pediatric speech language pathologist, and thanks so much for watching TeachMeToTalk.com's Therapy Tip of the Week. Thank you.